Dog RV. At 6.53, it's time now for our Thursday morning sprint here on Good Morning Northwest. We'll check in with our Rio Barber in just a minute, but first, here's a look at today's top stories. A group of four teenagers got in a crash early this morning in Benton County. It was just before 3.30 a.m. The police got the call about a rollover crash on Badger Canyon Road. Sergeant John Thompson with the Sheriff's Office telling us the four teens were speeding down a hill when they came around a corner and lost control and rolled their car. One teen was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The driver was cited for driving without a license. Pasco police helping Washington State Patrol this morning arrest a warrant suspect who led police on a high-speed chase. At about 9.30, Nelson Miha was seen speeding in Kennewick but wouldn't stop for troopers and fled at speeds up to 95 miles per hour to the Blue Bridge. Pasco police then joined in and chased Miha to Baker Lou and Piccadilly Drive. He then fled on foot. Police used a canine but couldn't find him for a while until a resident spotted Miha walking around and called police. He was arrested for his warrant speeding and eluding. A fire started behind a Kennewick home yesterday. Benton County firefighters say it was started by a lawn mowing company, possibly hitting a rock and sparking the flames. The fire was put out quickly but caused damage to the fence. No one was injured. A Dayton man died when he crashed into a tree Wednesday along State Route 27, about an hour north of Pullman. 61-year-old Rob Breer was driving northbound in a 1992 Toyota pickup near the town of Tico when he failed to negotiate a turn, crossed the road, and hit a tree. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Washington State Patrol is not sure if drugs or alcohol played a factor in the crash. Kennewick police have identified the officer involved in Tuesday's shooting that led to the arrest of a wanted man. Police say officer David Hughes will be on administrative leave while they investigate the incident. Hughes shot at 33-year-old Elijah Lowell, who police say had a gun and was running from officers. Lowell was not hit but surrendered to officers and was arrested. Hughes has been with KBD for three years and has 19 years of law enforcement experience. Authorities are investigating the case of two California men who went missing in Yakima County as a homicide. The sheriff's office spokesperson says 25-year-old Josiah Hildebrand and 48-year-old John Cleary are presumed dead. Their car was found abandoned in a Toppenish orchard on June 8th. The same day, five people were shot and killed just a half hour away in White Swan. The spokesperson says it's possible the two cases are connected. The FBI is helping the sheriff's office with the investigation. The West Richland City contractor is installing a sewer main line across Vomiting Range Road at the intersection of Austin Drive today. Between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., traffic will be limited to one lane and controlled by flaggers. Construction is expected to allow for two-way traffic for the day. However, due to soil conditions, it was required to limit traffic to one lane. And this will cause some traffic and could continue into tomorrow. And here's a live look outside on the Legend Sky Cam Network in Toppenish, all powered by your local Ford store. We'll see some blue skies for us throughout today. And, of course, that sunshine sticking around. But as well as those wind speeds, they're going to be picking up for the lower Columbia Basin area. So there is a fire weather warning in effect for this afternoon in the Tri-Cities, Walla Walla, Pendleton, and Hermiston area. You can see speeds up to 30 miles per hour paired with the low humidity, about 15 to 25 percent. So it's not a great combo. Try to avoid any kind of burning outdoors for today because if the fire does develop it will spread very quickly so here's the temperatures as you're heading out the door 63 in the tri-city 61 in walla walla in yakima 54 and in ellensburg 58 there radar satellite giving you a look at just how quiet it'll be in our region for today with those clear skies in most areas and as we take a step out uh, you can see seattle and portland if you're headed those directions bring an umbrella you should uh, be seeing some showers over in that area so here's your seven day forecast for the tri-cities today again that high of 85 degrees leading into the weekend Saturday a high of 87 there and Sunday a high of 92 before it picks up next week with those high 90s and giving you a look at your seven day forecast for the Yakima area what well, you can expect again mostly clear skies for this week 80 for today and tomorrow on Saturday a high of 87 there and Sunday a high of 92 before those high 90s there as well so it'll be a gorgeous week ahead and bring out those shades again because Lots yeah, of sun. <laughs> absolutely. Looking forward to that sunshiny weekend. And as always, to everyone joining us, thank you so much for waking us, waking up with us here on Good Morning Northwest. Good Morning America is next. And as always, you can find us online at yaktrynews.com for all your local weather and news needs. And thank you for waking up with us.